Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Searching for Sasquatch is where a witness can tell their story, unload those feelings, and get it off their shoulders. If you would like to report a sighting, email us at sfsasquatch at gmail.com or see the link in the description below. Just copy and paste the link in your email. In this episode, we bring you two different sightings from the same witness. Our reports today come to us from Shoshone County, Idaho, close to Prospector Creek. Report number 65924, Class Bravo, was submitted by the witness Bruce on Wednesday, August 12, 2020, just four days after his second sighting. Our witness tells us that on August 8, 2020, around 9.30 p.m., he had a strange occurrence while he was camping on the St. Joe River in Idaho. He said, It is the second time I've had an experience by the St. Joe River. The first one was about eight years ago. A neighboring camper was chopping wood for about 10 to 15 minutes, and after he quit, I heard two wood knocks above the road and above the campground. That kind of freaked me out. I got up and went and looked and there was something on the road above us that was staring down at me. I don't know what it was, but it was there. My second experience happened last weekend on August 8, 2020. It was a clear night and I was at a gravel pit logging landing. I'm not really sure what the area was used for. I heard three whoops or long group calls over the sound of my music. When I turned my music off, I heard nothing. It became very quiet. No one was camping within one half mile of me, and that's what made me wonder what was going on. I would like to give a verbal description of what I encountered, so if you're interested, call me. So BFRO investigator Daryl Euler did just that. His follow-up investigation report adds the following details. I spoke with this witness over the phone for approximately 45 minutes. I found him to be very sincere about his experiences. He said after the latest incident, he felt compelled to submit a report. The witness relayed the following to me. Incident number one. On Labor Day weekend in 2012, he was camping at Turner Flat Campground right along the St. Joe River. He was camped in spot number one, which is closest to the St. Joe River Road. It was around 7 to 7.30 in the evening, and a fellow camper had been chopping wood for his campfire. About 10 minutes after the chopping had stopped, this witness heard two loud and distinct wood knock sounds coming from across the road and up the hill, which is away from the other campers. He described the knocks as having more resonance than the sound of chopping wood. He walked up and down the road while scanning the hillside. The witness then described seeing a large, dark face looking at him from a gap in the brush on the hillside. He said they had eye contact for approximately a minute before he retreated back to his campsite to retrieve a firearm. He went back to the location where he saw the face and it was gone. When I asked the witness to describe what he saw, his first words were big eyes, big face. Upon further questioning, he advised he was not close enough to see details, but the head was big, dark colored, oval shaped, and had dark eyes. He went up to the location the next morning to check for footprints. He didn't find any prints, but standing on his tiptoes, he could look through the gap in the brush where he saw the face. From this vantage point, he could see down into the campground. Incident number two. This is the latest incident which prompted this report. On August 8, 2020, the witness was camping in an undeveloped campsite approximately 2.6 miles east of the first incident as the crow flies. This site was across the road from the river on the hillside. It was approximately 9.30 p.m. and he was listening to some classic rock over a small Bluetooth speaker. The witness heard three loud whoops from the hillside above and to the east of him. He described the whoops as being drawn out sounding. He said he immediately knew a human didn't make that sound and that there was no one camped near him. He said he turned off his speaker and listened, but there were no more vocalizations. He told me he decided to make whooping sounds back, but there was no answer and it was quiet the rest of the night. 
This witness seemed genuinely unnerved by the latest incident. I am familiar with this area, and it's a rugged country. Any sounds coming from the north of the campsite is extremely unlikely to come from a human source since it's nothing but steep, forested terrain. The witness told me he had been camping in the St. Joe National Forest for the last 20 years, and these are the only two encounters that he could not contribute to any of the local known wildlife. This concludes our report today. Stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help.